It is to <sighs> Yes, lads. What is going on? Welcome to Liverpool for first. Welcome to Liverpool. And um, thank you. You're all very welcome. You're also very welcome to season five. Episode 5, I think, of the Troy Sports Podcast. Um, a little bit different to the usual setup. And most likely, definitely not going to be as long as our normal episodes of the podcast. No guest on the show today. Um, we have cameraman in the background, cameraman Thomas, who has made some slight features throughout the, throughout the years. Um, there he is there in his nice jeans and his brown belt and his white t-shirt. <laughs> anyway, like I said, a little bit different to the normal episodes in terms of the setup. I'm sitting in a big chair in the corner of a hotel room in Liverpool. Um, nice little view. Maybe even if we just turn the chair a little bit, we might get to see that view um, a little bit. I might... How are you keeping? <laughs> get back out of the camera. We're in Liverpool. A couple of friends are going to the Ollie Morris concert. We were meant to do an interview with a pretty big athlete. And it was going to be an interesting interview. But unfortunately, like all things in life, some things don't come true. This fell through a little bit. But we're here. We're in the hotel room. We're chilling out while the Ollie Morris concert is going on. We have actually some food service on the way. And we have the World Athletics Championships on the telly at the moment so you really can't complain looking forward to the women's 1500 meter final of course we have our very own Kira McGee in that final we'll dabble a little bit into the World Athletic Championships throughout the next 20 minutes or so so sit back relax maybe throw on the World Athletic Championships depending on what time or where or when you're listening to this episode of the podcast like I said it's going to be a little bit different chilling in a hotel room the microphone setup is also different we have the Road Wireless Go. Um, usually we're in the little home studio with our um, Samsung Q2U set up with the whole bloody audio interface and, and, and whatnot. But today we're going with the Road Wireless Go, little wireless podcast set up in the nice comfy chair. We have the new pop filter. Um, as you see, the orangey, big, orangey, red, purpley, pinky one. Um, and of course, we have the nice little flagpole that has Troy Sports all around it. We got the same setup for the microphone at home. So um, you'll see that in the next episode of the podcast from the studio at home. Um, but yeah, no, this is going to be for like when we're out and about at, at races and things. So people know who we are, what we're doing and what we're all about. So looking forward to getting this out and about at the races. Now... Talking about racing, um, I have mentioned in a couple episodes of the podcast and a few of the vlogs that I was going to be doing a solo episode of the podcast fairly soon, kind of talking about where I am in terms of running and fitness and the gym and fighting and things like that, so I am going to take the next few minutes to kind of discuss that a little bit then we'll probably get on to the world championships as we go on a little bit later on in the episode if you hear a knock throughout this episode it is just our food service on the way i have a buttermilk chia bata coming and some salted caramel ice cream once we get back training then um we'll be back 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 to eating well back to eating nice actually it's lovely sitting here with the beautiful view and um, so i really cannot come complain the view is really really nice so, where I am at my, with my running, where I have been with my running over the past couple of months, weeks, days, and where I want to go with running. So, I actually can't remember the last time I had a solo episode of the podcast, definitely a good, good few months ago. That means then I can't remember kind of where we last left off, you could say. Um, but over the past couple of months, I went back running um, for actually last cross-country cross season. Um, so I went back running, I'd say it could have been around last October, November-ish. Um, no ambitions to race at all. Um, it was around the time I had I released a Cardiff vlog last year. Um, so that was around last October. Um, 
So I went back for a bit of cross country training during then. The knees and the Achilles held up perfectly. The knees and the Achilles aren't a problem at, anymore at, at all. So they held up perfectly. Um, at that time, I was running, doing ten k road runs with the lads, and um, doing tough twenty minute, twenty five minute tempos and six by a mile uh, over in Trinity, getting ready for cross country. Um, so really can't complain in that sense at that time. Now. In ter- they can't complain in terms of knees and Achilles at that time. But what did start to stem was some shin and calf problems. So it was one morning I was out, I was doing a session at home at, uh, in the park beside my house. And I started running, during, done the warm-up, done my stretches, done everything. And my shins, my shins along here, the front of my shins, front of the tibialis, and my calves just were so stiff, so sore, my range of motion was crap um, and the pain was really, really bad as well. So just a really unenjoyable experience altogether. Um, so after that session, I text my coach and I was like, look, I've been just really not enjoying running. The, the pain has been too bad, it's been too uncomfortable, it's not allowed me to run as much as I wanted to and as fast as I wanted to and as hard as I wanted to as well. So, it, it was no. That wasn't the first time it troubled me. And um, when I got back running, it also started troubling me. Um, like during the Trinity sessions, like we do the strides or we do the warm up, whatever. My calves was like a seizing pain, um, and my shins were actually just really, really sore. That was bugging me for a bit of time during last year's country season while I was running. Actually, my calves one day we were out on a road run, and they were just giving me awful, awful pain. They would seize up straight away. I'd ignore it. I'm a great man for just ignoring. The pain and keep keep on going, which in 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 the long term um, does me a lot of harm and it does me no good. But we were out on one road run. I remember it. Had, it was uh, we'd, we'd stop at traffic lights and it would really start to seize up and then I'd run again and it would take a bit of time to kind of get back into my running. And then the pain would still be there and it would get really really sore. So. I remember that road run specifically. I had to start stop and start walking. Then during strides before a big session, it would start really, really hurting. So that led to then the session at home on the grass. And I was like, you know what, fuck this. So I I went home, texted my coach. I was like, look, running has been going poorly um, over the past. I don't know even how long I was at it. I'm going to say maybe three months um, at that time. Um, this is... Before starting back last October, I just I I don't think I went back running with I, I that was the first time back running with the team in a long long time. Prior to that, I I cannot even remember um the 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 I suppose the last good block of training that I had um you know prior to the whole beginning of the knees and Achilles injury so that was the last kind of block of training that I had and I'm not even going to say solid block of training because of the pain that I was in so anyways um I texted my coach and I was like look I haven't been enjoying running the past few months or a few weeks or however long I was at a month or two months or so I'm going to take break out I'm going to start strengthening up again um, my calves and my shins um, and I'm going to then try and get back as soon as I can. That did not happen. As you've seen on the channel, the content switched up. As you've seen over on Instagram, trysports.official, link down in the description and in the show notes below. That just did not happen. Um, I kind of put running on the back foot, nearly you could say quit it, as such, um, and the, the, the content on the channel switched up, the content on the Instagram switched up, and it went 100% gym. It went 100% gym. I was 100% gym. I started bulking. Um, I'll talk specifically about the gym now, I suppose, um, because that's where we are in, in terms of the injury timeline. Um, you can go back to one of the first episodes of the podcast where I started talking about the initial injury that had me out for a while. Um, I, I think it says I'm injured in two places and then there's another one that says like I'm injured dot 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 again so there's a couple of uh, solo episodes of the podcast that does follow the timeline of the injuries but every time I go back to do a solo episode of the podcast I've kind of forgotten um, I've kind of forgotten where we last left off so the timeline may not be as continuous and as smooth as you would like but it's roughly around um, the, the, the specific times of the specific injuries. Anyway, so 
we went and we got fully into the gym and um, the content switched up like i said there's a good few gym vlogs on the channel there's videos of me over on instagram with kind of showing my gym progress and um, so the, the content switched i started bulking i am um, at the moment i'm 72 kg um, I when I stopped running the last time I was 65 kg so between October and what they what month are we in now end of August now we're coming into September and um, I've put on about 9 kg that is obviously between specifically bulking I was on mass gain or I was eating more and I was intaking more protein and um, mass gainer does like over 1200 calories in two scoops and 50 grams of protein so that was helping me put on weight and um, I obviously wasn't running as much or I wasn't running at all I wasn't doing any sort of cardio um, and obviously I was putting on muscle as well so all that accumulated into now where I am 9 kg heavier I'm about 72 kg so we went fully into the gym um, we started recording gym vlogs. I started going to the gym every single day. Um, and I, in terms of physio, in terms of uh, physio exercises, physio stretches, going to the physio itself completely got rid of that. That was completely gone and it was 100% in the gym. If you go to my Instagram page, like I said, it's down in the description, you can see actually the progress that I've made in the gym and I started really, really enjoying it. I started doing an Arnold split, which is push, pull, legs, um, chest and back and shoulders and arms and then legs again. Um, and then there were some days where I just went, I had a bit of fun, I, if I was going with one of my friends or whoever I was, I was going with. Whatever day we're doing, I would I would jump in and do it. Then I was taking it seriously, but having fun with it at the same time. And the progress that I was seeing, I was really, really loving. Everyone was telling me, yeah, you can see the progress, which I was absolutely delighted with. So, went big in the gym, and then I was looking at the Clan of Fire's Instagram page. I was still obviously in the in the in the in the team group chat on WhatsApp and on Snapchat, and. I was just like, oh, I was getting the itch for it a little bit to 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 get back. Now, in saying that, during the course of being in the gym, um, I was fighting as well. Um, I, I was doing um, my toy uh, in here in Dublin just to keep a little bit of fitness. So I was doing my toy, and I really started to uh, enjoy that again. And um, yeah, I was keeping a little bit of fitness doing that. I was starting to enjoy it again, and um, I was never never going to compete in that or anything. But it's also, I suppose, a good life skill to have. So I suppose that's important to know and um, that I started and um, doing that again, and um, I was I was enjoying it. So. I was doing that and I was then out and I was looking in, at the WhatsApp group and I was looking at the Snapchat group and I was looking at old photos and I was looking at old photos one day and I was just like, you know what, I got that itch back, that itch that I had before my injury and the, you know through certain times when I when I was injured, I got that itch back but it was, it was really bad this time and I was sitting down there. In, I was sitting down in the kitchen one day, and it was a really, really nice day out. And I was actually getting ready to go to work. And my dad sat down, and he was like, "I know what you're thinking right now." And I was like, "What is this, what is this guy going to say?" And he was like, "You're looking out there at the moment, and you're like, that's a deadly day for a run." And like this is the first time we kind of sat down and really spoke about my running and wanting to get back into. It. And I was like, "That is exactly what I was thinking." And that was the first time he ever brought anything like that up to me. And I was like, and he was like. The one thing he'd hate is to see in 20 years, 30 years time, being sitting there and going, God, I really regret not giving running one last shot. And I suppose that that could be the whole theme of this next couple of weeks, months, years, hopefully, in running is giving running one more shot. That's, that's I suppose, what I really... Um, N nailing down this time is, is, is really giving it one more shot. I've, I've been back and forth in my head of throughout the injury, being like, no, this is the last time, no, I'm going fully in the gym. But this is, it's not giving it one more shot And in terms of uh, running as hard as I can and, you know, getting injured again and, you know, forgetting about it. It's eating properly, it's fueling properly, it's uh, training properly, it's, it's starting off slow, low mileage and building it up. It's um, doing strength work, it's removing the, 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 the gym in terms of how intense I was doing it and neglecting 
running mobility and running exercises. It's seeing the physio once or twice a month. It's getting the sports massages. It's doing the recovery. It's doing the ice baths. It's doing... Um, the, next week I'm actually getting... Um, Dry needles done, which I'll, I'll I'll jump into now as we get further along the timeline. It's it's not going back to running, going one hundred percent from the start in terms of my training, and inevitably getting injured and then calling it a day. It's actually focusing on building it up nice and slowly, and giving it one good last try. And within that last try, that also may mean getting a few little injuries here and there, or having to take a couple of weeks out um, to allow my body to build up a bit of fitness, but then recover as well. So it, giving it one last try is a bit of a grey area of a statement, but it, it involves many different things. It's not as black, as white, black and white as gone. I'm running as hard as I can until I get injured and then done. So giving it one, one last try over the past few weeks since Clan of Harriers um, track reopened in DCU uh, or in uh, Morton Stadium, DCU's new track, um, that our team obviously is the host club for that track. That reopened the first night, so I actually can't remember the specific dates. I could get it on Instagram or something. The first night that reopened, I went back up training with the team. It was great to see the lads again. I didn't text them or tell them that I was going to be com- coming up. It was a little bit of a, a, a shock, I suppose, because I've been gone for, for so long. But I went back up. Um, what did I do? I, I done my physio exercises and, and stretches in the gym and I done a couple of slow 400s. Now, I know I just mentioned that I'm going to be taking it slow and really building it up, um, but I suppose do as I say and not as I do because I done the complete opposite a few weeks ago when I went back up for the first session um, on the new track with the team. I... Um, went back, done a couple of 400s, done a couple of fast 400s. Um, you even saw the track vlog, the track workout vlog that we posted on the channel. Um, I was going all out in that. Um, and that's only if, uh, a month or so of doing slow runs after being out for months on end. There's so many, I suppose, things I could have done better even in this, this time starting back that I didn't. And it's come to affect me now. And I'm going to talk about kind of where I am now in a moment of my current fitness and my current injuries, I suppose, um, that I don't have that thankfully have gone away and which will allow me to prepare for cross-country and indoors, which I'll also talk about now in a minute. So I went back when the new track opened in Martin Stadium, done the couple of 400s, and uh, like I said, we done the session that does the vlog. I'll leave the link to it down in the description and the show notes down in the description um, to that vlog. But... Still, I'd done too much too soon. I started to get some really bad pain, shin pain again, uh, along the inside of my um, in, along the inside of my shin here. The last time I came out, it came, it came into an injury. Um, it was the outside. It was along the front of my tibialis here and the as well as main part of my calf here. The way I sorted of them was obviously the rest that I took, um, and I started doing. It, it was a lot in in uh, the. A lot of the treatment that I done for my shins and calves can be seen in the warm up of the vlog, the workout vlog. But I done a lot of tibialis exercises with a resistant band and calf raises and things that have really helped my calves. And um, shin walks and toe walks and, and and things like that, heel walks and things like that. So um, they they've really helped my shins and my calves. But starting back, I got a really bad pain along the inside of my shins here. And once again, it's from doing too much too soon. All right, lads. If you take a look out the window, if you're listening to this on Spotify, Anchor, wherever, it won't make a difference. If you're watching this on YouTube and you take a look out the window, it is nearly pitch black dark. The room has gotten a lot darker. The food came. It was below par, mid, mid to below par. Um, and obviously the women's 1500 meter final and the men's 3K steeplechase final was on as well. So we were looking at that. Big, big shout out to Kira McGean who got fourth, nearly claimed the third place position. Um, Faith Kibiegon, uh was in there as well. So it was, And obviously she took the win, the current world record holder over the 1500 meters. So it was a very, very tough field, but major shout out to Kira McGean getting fourth place in the um, 1500 metres women's final arguably Ireland's best athlete at the moment we still have Rashida Adeleke to run her 400 metres in the 400 metre final who came first in her heat 
and second in the semi-final. So she is in tip-top shape. Um, and obviously she has a 400 meter national record as well. So she's in great, great shape to run well. And maybe even do one better than Kira McGeehan and get that third place position. Obviously we've had other great athletes throughout the course of the campaign. Like the... the um, mixed relay um team in 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 the world in the in the final there obviously we had um we had athletes like Andrew Coskrin we have Mark English who's made his way into the 800 meters semi final we have John Fitzsimons who's um was recently on the podcast who was in the 800 meters as well and um, link to that podcast down in the description below and many, many more great, great athletes um, over in Budapest, so Ireland. Irish athletes doing us proud over there, um, but still great races to come, like the 1500 metre finals for the men's, where you have Jakob Ingebrigtsen, who cruised through the semi-final, um, and we have a lot more to come over the next couple of days, so really, really looking forward to that. Wanted to touch on that um, and give a big shout out to a lot of the athletes that went over to compete in Budapest in the World Championships from Ireland. Shout out to all of them athletes and hopefully more great interviews to come with them um, over the next few weeks. Now, I'm um, going to get a little bit more selfish at the moment, going to wrap up my, I suppose, current fitness and all. Um, so, uh, sorry if I'm a bit off track from when we last left. I think we're, we're kind of talking about the the little injury that I, I picked up on the inside of my shin and um, or injury or just pain that was kind of um, stopping me from running as, as much as I wanted since starting back because I went into sessions too quick and done too much too soon again so I went to see a physio he gave me exercises I took a little bit of time um, out I've been on holidays the past 10 days I was in the sea in the swimming pool doing um, ice baths there so that really helped with the pain I was on the bike there, I've been on the bike at home, I've been doing two 5k runs every day and my team is currently on a break after track season, getting ready now. Um, next Saturday is going to be my first time back with the team, they were, uh, they're uh, they're going to be up in Abbottstown next Saturday. They're starting back training on Tuesday, I'm just going to be away next Tuesday. So. Next session with the team is going to be next Saturday up in Abbottstown, getting ready for cross country. The lads and uh, the lads and I are also going to book indoor lanes so to get started training for some indoors as well. Get some speed work in. Going to be doing a couple of continuing my two five k runs a week, doing sessions on the bike, doing long slow cycles on the bike, um, and going to start uh, next Saturday the session in Abbottstown. I'll probably do like two. I'll probably do a thirty minute run and two of the reps that they do, whether it's fifteen hundred meters, whether it's eight hundred meters, whether it's miles, whether whatever it is. Really, really looking forward to that to nailing down for cross country as well because I really missed out last season with my shin and calf pains. Um, and like I said, me and the lads are going to book some of the lanes. And, and go up there as a team to um, get some indoor racing and training under the belt. Hopefully you can get some grading meets in. Um, but as well, big, big advocate at the moment for not doing too much too soon. Still working with the physio, getting the acupuncture done, the dry kneeling done on the inside of my shin on the 25th. So really, really looking forward to that as well. Um, and yeah... Nailing down the running. Um, the bike has become a big part of my training um, at the moment. I think when I get back running um, uh, properly and in training, I'll probably do the sessions Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Monday, Wednesday. Instead of doing a 45-minute run, I'll probably do an hour and a half cycle, easy cycle. Um, I'll still be getting my recovery in. Still be building that base fitness, that base aerobic fitness. Someone just beeped their car. Probably a big fan of mine out the window. Still going to be building that base aerobic fitness and it's going to be taking me off my feet and not as much stress on the legs at the day after a big session. Um, and even days I'm doing double days, further down the line I could do a long cycle on the bike, on the spin bike and a easy 30 to 45 minute run as well. So that's the plan, not too much too soon. Going to continue watching the World Athletics Championships and um, more content to come hopefully as well for the National Indoors. If I don't get the chance to race, we'll be there with Athletics Ireland again picking up interviews. So. A lot to come. Going to enjoy the rest of my time here in Liverpool. Looking forward to getting back training with the team. Going out with the lads on Monday. So really, really looking forward to that as well. Um, but without further ado, I said I'd wanted to do a solo episode for the podcast for a while. So we got within here. Squeeze in there. Hopefully it's only about 20 to 30 minutes. We'll see. Um, maybe maybe closer to 40. But we got everything in that we wanted to say. I hope you all enjoyed as well. Um, if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe. Links to my Instagram and all are down in the description below. Also... Big thanks to the sponsor of the podcast, Mini Tommy Atlas. Bradley. <laughs>
Big thanks to the cameraman for setting the camera on, and that's all he done. No, no it. thanks to the cameraman. <laughs> big thanks to the cameraman. Big thanks to the sponsor of the podcast, Mini Athletics. Cameraman has a name too. Cameraman has a name. <sighs> big thanks to Tommy on the camera. Big thanks to the sponsor of the podcast, Mini Athletics and Niall Fergus. Links to Niall's Instagram and um, down in the description. Links to uh, Mini Athletics DDS and Mini Athletics Ireland are down in the description and the show notes as well. And link to the Mini Athletics website is down in the description below. Mini Athletics is the place to go um, in Ireland for young kids. And um, not only does it get them into athletics, but also so helps them develop great athletic and life skills such as teamwork and um, jumping skills, running skills, organization skills and they get, have a great, great time at the same time. They do birthday parties, they come to your schools, they do class and the Dundalk draw the and swords at the weekends and they're always looking to expand across the country. So all links are down in the description for that. But that's going to do it for this episode of the podcast. I hope you all enjoyed it. Once again, big shout out to Tommy Bradley on the camera. Really appreciate it. He's after... Destroying my bed. <laughs> um, I think I think we're all good. Um, thank you all for listening and watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye. It's not okay. <laughs>